Hello, YouTube. I like to read posted articles of a bright Russian scientist, a graduate of the top military space academy, now a leading engineer and programmer. He was involved with the ISS and the Mir station projects, and he worked in the GLONASS and special programs of his country. Most likely, he also worked in the little-known Russian space intelligence agency. His name is Sergei, and he's very bright. I think there is a reason that he publishes information on the Internet about such subjects like the outer space exploration, celestial mysteries, moon, Antarctica, the insides of our planet, for instance. Maybe it is a signal to his counterparts pointing out certain things, meaning this, we know this much or more, but this is all we will admit. Or maybe Sergei is just having fun. He has immense knowledge and a cool sense of humor. You can find more of my videos about him and the subjects he is interested in. I want to tell you today about his observations about the planet Earth, or rather the insides of our planet. So our planet is not at all a solid piece of stone or rock that rotates aimlessly at some distance from its home star. The structure of the Earth is actually quite complicated, but at the same time, to Sergei, it's quite entertaining. And the most interesting thing about this is that there's a core inside the Earth. Its diameter is at least 3,500 kilometers, about the size of our moon. That's the size that the moon has. The temperature of the Earth's core is almost 6,000 degrees Celsius. That is about the same as the surface temperature of the sun. And it consists mainly of iron and nickel. The Earth's core consists of two components a solid inner core and a liquid outer core located above it. How science knows this is a whole separate story. And we will definitely talk about this separately another time. I will leave only some hints here today, says Sergei. In fact, science still doesn't know much about the bowels of our planet. There are still a lot of unresolved issues. For example, why is the core so hot? Why is it hotter than it should be? Here's the thing. When the planets, including our Earth, were formed 4.5 billion years ago, it happened as a result of a lot of collisions. Small pieces of matter collided with each other, eventually creating large planets. A lot of heat was released during these collisions. Therefore, all the newborn planets were very hot. And for such a large body, as a planet to cool down, it takes a fairly long time interval. Most of the heat in the Earth's core is the heat that has remained in it since its formation. Everything seems to be fine, but according to calculations carried out about what is happening inside the Earth, the core of our planet should no longer be as hot as it actually is. Scientists, of course, do not have a thermometer to lower it on the string into the core, and the assumed temperatures are the result of calculations and nothing more. However, using the data obtained during earthquakes, scientists know that the outer core must be liquid. If this were not the case, then the seismic vibrations caused by earthquakes would spread quite differently than it actually happens. In addition, if the liquid core did not exist, the Earth would not have a magnetic field. It is the flows of liquid iron and nickel that create electric and magnetic fields, which ultimately create the global magnetic field of our planet. Obviously, for the outer core to be liquid, it should not be too cold. This is where the contradiction between the observed effects and the calculations arises. After all, the latter shows that it must be too cold inside our planet for the existence 
of a liquid core. Why is that? What is the reason that everything is wrong? Most likely the fact is that the, there must be another source of heat inside the Earth. And scientists are almost sure that this source is radioactive. The fact is that radioactive elements, when they decay, they turn into other chemical elements while releasing energy. It is this energy that can be a source of additional heat in the bowels of the Earth. It is possible that there is a sufficiently large amount of radioactive elements in the Earth's core. It is this circumstance that allows the outer core to remain liquid and generate a global magnetic field. But is this really the case? After all, we cannot look into the core. However, there are enough signs that there really are radioactive elements in the bowels of the Earth. For example, uranium. Like other chemical elements, uranium in principle can be found everywhere in the universe. Some of the atoms that made up the original giant cloud of gas and dust that formed the sun and planets 4.5 billion years ago were uranium atoms. Therefore, it is not surprising that uranium is also found on Earth. Uranium mining is carried out all over the world. But we are interested in uranium, which is located in the Earth's core. All theories say that there shouldn't be so much of it there to explain the excess heat. And this is also a mystery. But perhaps just the formation of the Earth did not happen at all, as science believes. And this assumption is normal. Indeed, over the past decades, hypotheses on this subject have changed very often. In the 20th century, for example, it was believed that planets gradually turned into large celestial bodies as a result of multiple collisions with small objects, and that every planet formed where it is today. However, it later turned out that the planets can wander. Today, scientists are simply sure that the big planets did not form at all where they are today. The gravitational interaction with dust and gas that existed between the planets in the early days of the solar system could well change their orbits. And perhaps with our Earth too, everything is not as simple as it seems. And it was not formed as gradually as previously assumed. The material from which the planets were formed was initially distributed unevenly. Its composition varied depending on the distance to the sun. It was warmer closer to the sun than away from it. And so there were fewer volatile substances, such as water and oxygen, the farther away from the sun. But oxygen is especially interesting to us because it terribly likes to react with other atoms. And it was a large amount of oxygen during the formation of the Earth that could ensure the course of certain chemical reactions that facilitate the connection of uranium with iron and the formation of the metallic core of the planet with their participation. But the Earth formed too close to the Sun. For the process described above, it clearly would not have, have enough oxygen. At least that's what the computer simulations show. And therefore, scientists have suggested that perhaps the formation of our planet took place in two stages. At first, the Earth, as previously thought, slowly grew, gathering from small pieces of all sorts of different materials, sticks, branches, and waste products of interstellar animals. That's Sergei's joke. Meanwhile, in the outer part of the solar system, smaller pieces of matter were also not sitting idly by. They turned into large objects as a result of collisions. However, the celestial bodies had a different chemical composition than that than the proto-Earth, which gradually appeared near the Sun. When the gas giants Jupiter and Saturn began to move through the solar system due to interaction with gas and dust, the gravitational disturbances caused by this process forced larger objects from the outer solar system 
to proceed inside and collide with the earth there. So the earth could get its oxygen. But perhaps a completely different process took place. Some researchers are of the opinion that it's not about uranium at all and that this radioactive potassium, in fact, is the source of heat of the Earth core. This hypothesis has been around since the 1970s, but only since 2003, thanks to some experiments, it has been possible to understand how this can work. Scientists managed to simulate the conditions inside the Earth in the laboratory and show that radioactive potassium can actually pass from the siliceous material of the Earth's crust and mantle into the metallic material of the Earth's core. But whatever it was, we should be happy that everything happened exactly as it happened. After all, without the magnetic field of our planet, life on it would not be as comfortable as it is today. Perhaps life as we know it would not have happened or would not have appeared at all. The magnetic field is our shield against aggressive cosmic radiation. It protects the Earth's atmosphere from the solar wind, which otherwise could have carried it into space a long time ago, as happened with Mars. And most likely, only thanks to the radioactivity of the Earth's interior, our planet is suitable for life, which successfully uses this circumstance wherever it this life came from in this world. That's how Sergei concludes. And um, decide on your own. But his ideas are very interesting. So that's what I wanted to let you know, and I'll bring more interesting observations from Sergei, another scientist that you might not have heard from. And uh, if you like my research, uh, please c support me. You'll find the links in the description to this video. Please tell others about my channel. Thank you for your attention to my work.